Hello, my name's Ronald Dodd and I'm making some videos on maintaining Hornby 00 trains. Today we're going to discuss uh, motor magnets. First we'll have a demonstration of a loco that has a standard magnet in there. This has recently been remagged and should be in quite good condition. As you can see, it's going fine. Now if we look at the amperage current drawer, we'll see that it's drawing just under point just under point three amps, which is quite good. These motors are designed to run at up to 0.65 Amps. Now we have a little load on there and the amperage has gone up as you might expect. 1.32. Still running fine. We can, we can go slow speeds. There's no problem. No matter what magnet or motor you put in there, you won't be able to pull heavier loads because the friction will not allow you. So let's take this off to a dead stop. And there you can see there's only about 0.55 amps. And that'll be the maximum that this motor can work, unless of course you weight it. I have a video of a a Montrose weighted that will that is pulling about 30 coaches with an original motor and magnet in there. So these motors are plenty strong enough. I'll just remove the casing. Can have a closer look again. Okay. A little bit of noise, but not too bad. Okay. Now let's change this magnet for a what they call a neo magnet, a neomodium, or I think is the correct term. There we have one right there. They're very, very powerful, so you need to be a little bit careful with them. Not all of us uh, do have, in fact, very few people have remag apparatus, so. A lot of people choose to, uh, to go with this type of magnet. Although the original double O uh, magnet there could last 40 50 years without needing to be remagged. Put that there. And I hope I got this the right way round. If it's the wrong way round, it'll it will travel in reverse so if it, if it goes in reverse then you'll have to just turn the turn the magnet around the other way you could have used of course use a compass to uh, to find out which way around the magnet was originally and then put this one in accordingly Okay, let's just check that uh, it's not catching on anywhere. Sometimes these magnets are not exactly the right size. Also, I forgot to mention that you should always make sure the faces are perfectly clean so that they, they mate up properly. 
Okay, let's uh, let's try this one. Seems to work. Thank you. Listen to that. You'll notice it is a little bit more noisy than the original magnet. This is because there's a probably a little bit of play in the top bearing and the and it's shaking back and forth as it as it turns. Okay. I'm gonna put the body on and uh, let's take a look at the the amp breathing. Yeah, um, very yeah, good. Less than it was, it was at about I think two point two nine, and now it's uh, it's uh, maybe ten percent lower or something like that. Again, just a little bit better as far as the amperage is concerned. But with the original magnet it was still well within its design capabilities. Well, let me just see how this uh, how this runs at uh, at, uh, at a slow slow speed or something. That's good. About the same as, as before. Let's see if I can get it any slower. We always have that little kick to start with. I would say that's pretty much the same. These uh, Hornby trains are not as Slowly geared as the more modern trains, the gearing is a little bit high, so they do fly around. Right then, let's. Uh, I think there is a slight problem with uh, with wear in this bearing. If you run a train for a long time with this very very strong magnet on, let me just demonstrate. I mean, you can't. This is a smaller. These are these are ten mil cube magnets, and you can't hardly pull them pull them apart. So I have an alternative way of doing this. Here I've put a ten mil mag magnet cubed that I also purchased on uh, on uh, on eBay. Probably a tenth of the price as the uh, the one that's actually been manufactured for the loco, as you can see. And I I have put a a card to try and insulate it away from the from the magnet a little bit. It's still 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 strong. That's about the same strength as the original magnet. It, at that point, if you look at the one with the neo in, you'll see. You know, I could probably lift the whole whole train off the off the deck with that. It's stronger than it needs to be, so I'm trying to get it back, dampen it down a bit, and get it back to how to the same strength as what the design strength is for the original magnet. Okay, so why don't we just try this one? Look at the amps. 
you can see they're running a little bit high. It's still okay, but that's just a reverse. Let's go one more time. Let's see what they do. It does actually run out. It's only got about, about 4 amps, or 0.4 amps, close to 0.4 amps. Now, there is something we can also check to improve that. If we look at the the gap, I've opened this up for demonstration purposes. You can see there's a very large gap between the pole piece and the armature. Now sometimes you might find them like this, and the, the smaller the gap, the more efficient the loco is, the motor is. So I'm going to use this tool here. It looks a bit frightening, but it works fine. So the idea is I'm going to put pressure on on the outside edge there and just try and bend one at a time. So I'm going to put the, the pliers one end on here and the other end close into this corner so it won't bend that one. So we just get one bent at a time. So. You need to look at look down through the air gap at the same time and just squeeze it in slowly until it almost touches. And then just turn this around a little bit to there and then do the same with the other side. Normally I hold it up so I can see a little bit better than this. Okay, you can see that that is uh, that's squeezed in. I was very careful not to touch the armature because the bearings are very very small and you will damage them. So the gap now is down to about probably about one and a half mil. You can get it a little bit closer than that if you like. But uh, why don't we try that and see, see how that reacts. It's still nice and quiet. And there, the, the amperage goes down to from 0.4 to less than 0.3. Okay, we'll put the body on there. Yeah. A little bit awkward because I'm driving the loco with my left hand here. Okay, and then there we're a little bit high. Both speeds just as good as the other one, any, any of the other manganese. And there we go. I think that is a good alternative to using the the large size large size magnet. Thank you very much for watching this video.